Welcome back to Let's Make a Game. This is James, and today we're going to learn a few important things. Uh, particularly, we're going to learn about variables and how they can make a game more interesting. But first, a word of warning, particularly for people who have more than one internet browser on their computer. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I am currently using Chrome, and I go to twinery.org, T-W-I-N-E-R-Y.org, in order to use the um, program in the browser. This isn't uh, relevant if you've downloaded the program and you're loading the program off your desktop. It's only if you're using an internet browser and going to the website and um, getting into the program there. So I choose using your browser and we can see what we expect to see which is we've got our one story the bridge and it's got a little bit of information about that but let's say that I for some reason decided to use um, Firefox instead I go to twinery.org and I choose using your browser or using my browser and it says there's zero stories. There are no stories saved in Twine right now. Well, what's happening there? Well, you probably noticed that when we go to Twinery, it doesn't ask you to log in or to give you their, give them your email or have a username or anything like that because you'd think that what's happening is that when you click that button, it's accessing some database that is stored at their end, and then it's giving you what they've got stored at their end. That's not actually what's happening. Um, Twine stores its information inside your browser program, which is quite unusual. Um, I assume it just it makes it quick. But it has the disadvantage that if you load another browser, even if it's on the same computer, that won't have the same information, and so therefore what you've done on one browser won't be saved on the other. Um, it also means that you can't get that information on a different computer either. But So that's the, that's the sort of cost of the decision they've made. But anyway, so bear that in mind. If you are using the program via a web browser rather than downloading it onto your own desktop, and if you have more than one uh, browser in your on your computer. So let's get into the the bridge, the game that we made uh, last time, if it can be called a game. And let me start by uh, teaching you about variables. Um, what exactly is a variable? Well, let's say you, you've made your game, it's um, bigger and better than, than this example, it's a proper story that you want to you know, show to other people. And it's quite good, but you wish that the player had the choice to enter their name or their character's name, and then later in the story, people would say would, would call them by that name. Well, if you want to do that, that's a piece of information that's going to be different from one play of the game to another. It's not something you can save inside the game because it's the, the, the player will enter a different thing each time, presumably. So you need to have some way to tell the computer, okay, I need you to save this information and I need to be able to access it at particular times. In other words, I need to have a, in that case, you'd have a field where the person would type in the name that they want to use and then you might say, well, are you sure you want to use that? Yes or no, yes, okay, and then later in the game, you want to be able to say, if the person has called themselves Prince Corrin, um, a character says, hello, Prince Corrin. Um, so you need to be able to ask the, ask the program, okay, what's stored in this, in this box, as it were, in this little piece of information, and can you get that out, and can you, in this case, you would print it. Um, there are other things you might want to do Having a name is just cosmetic, but you might want to have uh, ideas that actually impact the story. And I'm going to show you an example. 
let's say that we want this to be a fantasy themed story and we want the player to be able to choose whether they're a human or a dwarf or an elf and we want that to have uh, a different we want that to have an impact in the story in other words there's particular things that an elf can do that a dwarf can't do and vice versa so let's say there might be a a part of the story where you have to sneak around and maybe if you're an elf you do really well at that and if you're a dwarf you do really badly at that and then if you're a human you do you know moderately well at that for example um, if you're using sort of uh, typical you know the typical abilities of, of fantasy races um, so what we need for that is firstly to be able to create variables and assign um, values to them and secondly we need to be able to tell the program okay if if this variable has this value then do this if the player is an elf do this if the player is a dwarf do this and if the player is a human do something else um, so let's do a very simple example of that so we start by let's say that we're going to start the game instead of starting by saying you must cross the river we're going to start by saying well, which race do you want to be now i'll show you a way to do this there is actually a more elegant way to do this which i'm going to show you later but this is this is good enough for now so if you want to create a new passage um you just click on new as you might expect and it creates it rather inconveniently it's created it all the way down there but anyway so let's now you probably remember that we can rename passages so if we want to if we want to start at this passage well this passage this passage is named start and that's now no longer a very good name so let's whoops I keep thinking that's the right we choose rename so let's call that decision that's not a very good name either because of course in a big game you're going to be um, facing lots of decisions so let's call it cross or wade now as I've said before it doesn't matter what you call it in terms of the players experience they'll never get to see that unless you there's probably some way to you know to make them able to see it but the default is that they won't ever see it um, so we call that one cross or wade and we'll rename this one to start the pu the purpose of doing this is more is for your own um, your own memory so whatever system works best for you I, I am using sort of words but you could use numbers you could just use little codes whatever you know it's whatever works for you it doesn't really matter now before we go any further I have to show you something quite annoying that we are going to need to do um, and I'll show you what to do and then I'll explain why we have to do it after that so we're going to go to story and details and this little tab appears here and one of the things the thing that we're interested in it also tells you how big it is which might be um, useful for you um, in particular this here it says whether there's broken links what a broken link is is when you have a choice and you've told the program if they click this choice send them to this page but you haven't made the page um, and if you have any broken links that's obviously a problem it's going to generate an error or something usually I think it's just you get a blank screen and the game sort of ends suddenly so that might be useful just to check that you don't have any broken links but the thing that we're trying to do today is we look at the story format we click and we go down and we choose sugar cube with the highest number so we've got that and now we can see that that's sugar cube now why do we do that well because quite annoyingly the people who made twine have at least two major what they call formats and the commands are all the same they do the same things but the way that you 
what you have to type to make a given command is different in the two formats. So, um, for example, uh, if I want to say get uh, the variable which I've called x and add 5 to that value, because it should be a numerical value, I can do that in Harlow, which is the default format. I can do that in um, Sugarcube, which is the one we've changed to. I can do it in any of the other sort of minor formats. But the way that you do it is different in each one. And I don't think that's a very good way to set it up. I don't think it adds much um, to have two completely separate formats. Um, I'm going to teach you Sugarcube because I think the display of Sugarcube is slightly better. Um, it has some features that Harlow doesn't have. It, it has built-in saving of your game or saving of the player's game, um, whereas Harlow just doesn't have that. Um, I don't know why they don't just use Sugarcube. Maybe it's like people didn't want to use the you know change from the old one or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's annoying, but that's what it is. And you, you, if you're gonna if you don't do that and you copy what I'm doing and try to follow along, you'll just get errors because you'll be in a in a Harlow format and therefore all of the commands will be written wrongly. Um, so that's a pain in the bum. But anyway, so let's say it start now. You might notice that the green spaceship, little cartoon spaceship icon, is still pointing to this page that we've renamed Cross or Wade. Um, that indicates that Cross or Wade is the starting page. And we don't want that to be the case. Of course, we want Start to be the starting page. So let's go to Passage. And then we see Start Story here. Um, it might be a bit hard to see on the screen, but there is a little version of the, this thing here is a little version of the spaceship icon. And we click that, and the green um, spaceship thing moves to that, and that means that if you play this game, it will now start from the start, which is what we want. So let's get into start, and this is going to be the same as we did before. We go choose your race, and then we'll say dwarf. Elf, human. Now you notice that I've enclosed dwarf, elf, and human in sets of double square brackets, which you'll find next to the P key on your keyboard if you're using a sort of standard American style uh, layout keyboard. And that tells the program that dwarf, elf, and human are. to be new passages. And it creates them, it creates them at the bottom, which is not fantastic for what we want, but that's all right. We can just move them around. And let's say that we want the variable that keeps track of what race you are to be called R, because R stands for race. Um, this isn't going to be such a big deal in this example, because we, we only have one variable, so it's going to be quite easy to keep track of. But you're gonna, if you're going to use variables at all, and of course you don't have to, but if you're going to use them, uh, you might end up using a lot of them, and you might end up losing track um, very quickly. So it is important what you name them, and it is important to keep track of them. And I'll, I would suggest doing this. You go new, create a new passage, now this passage, we're not going to, it's not really going to be part of the story at all. It's just going to be for our benefit. Um, so what I'm going to do is just down and right, uh, race, one equals dwarf. Now I don't have to use any particular format here because this is just for me to look at when I'm uh, creating the game. It, it's, it doesn't appear to the player ever. Um, so all this is, is I've just, in fact, let's start a list in case we have, so I've started a list of variables and R says what race you are and then it's got a numeric value, or it's going to have a numeric value where one, if R is one, that means the player's character is a dwarf and two is an elf and three is a human. So Let's X out of that. 
And so all we do here is we do set our, I'll type it up and then I'll explain to you what it, what it actually means. Okay, so what I've done here is these, I've got, uh, is that a less than? Yeah, I've got less than, less than, set dollars $r equals 1, greater than, greater than. Now let's explain what that means. Um, the less than, less than, some text greater than, greater than, means don't print this text. It's not to be shown to the player. It's an instruction for the program. Um, in this particular case, I've chosen set, which means give a value to a variable. In this case, it's a numeric value, i.e. it's a number. Um, it could also be text. I could have chosen to say set r equals dwarf, for example, but I've chosen to use numbers just because numbers... There's some things you can do with numbers that you can't do with text and vice versa, but they're I mean, it's really just your choice, whatever's sort of easiest for your brain. Um, I suppose if you were using text, you wouldn't need to keep track of which number meant which race. But anyway, um, so set means assign a value to a variable. Dollars means, dollars R means, this isn't just the letter R, I'm talking about the variable R, equals one. So set the value of R to one. In the, as it were, the hypothetical box marked R, place the value one. Go to cross or weight. Now you might have guessed what we're gonna do. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm just, yep, oh, I stuffed that up. Didn't prop it, didn't I? <laughs> God, I really did. Can't you use Command Z on? I'm mostly used to uh, PCs. There we go, all right. Control all, Control X, Control V. All right, sorry about that. I was trying to cut and paste and I don't normally use Macs. This is actually my girlfriend's um, computer. And the reason I've done that is so that I can just paste that. And then in the elf one, we set it to two. And then in the human one, we set it to three. There is a, there is a slightly more elegant way to do this where you wouldn't need dwarf, elf, and human. It would just, you could just do it from start and it would go straight to cross and wade. But I will uh, demonstrate that later. Um, so let's test our story. So we go to story. No, we don't. We go to... What do we do? How do we... Sorry, I've had a brain fart. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, build. Yeah, that's not terribly logical. Okay, so we've chosen the bridge. Um, by the way, you can see that the little picture is slightly different. That picture, each circle represents a um, a passage or a page, um, and so it soon becomes just a big mass of dots um, because any substantial um, story is is going to have you know tons and tons of uh, tons and tons of pages usually. But anyway, so we choose play. Now, what we should see. Uh, first of all, because we've changed it to um, sugar cube, we have this new um, sidebar, which gives us the title of the story, which is the bridge, and it gives us an automatic ability to re restart, and gives us an ability to save and to load saved games. Um, this just lets us shut that if we want to. Um, but otherwise, it should play basically the same. So choose your race. All right, let's be a dwarf today. Uh, you must cross the river. I'd like to cross over the bridge. You've crossed the river, you win, hooray. Um, we can also choose to go back or forward um, using these this button up here. If we choose to wade across the river, the river carries you away, you lose. Now, so that's identical to how it was in the previous video. So what was the point of having these variables? Well, now let's... Now let's make the variables mean something. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to teach you how if then works. Um, so let's start with wade across the river. Let's say, so 
So again, we're going to need these, um, uh, what are they, less than, less than, bit of text, greater than, greater than. Again, that tells the computer this is for you. It's not for the player. Um, so let's say if r equals 1, I'll do this and then I'll explain what I've done. Okay, so what what I've done, if r or if dollars r, if the variable r equals equals 1. Now it's very important um, to have those two equal signs because if we go, let's say we did this, it wouldn't recognize that as asking you if r is 1. It would take that as set r to 1, which is a bit illogical. Because why would you say if, if you wanted to set, excuse me, I'm going to snooze. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, why would you say if, if you wanted to set r to 1? Well, you know, never mind. That's what it does. So you've got to go equals equals, and that tells the computer, don't, we're not telling you to set r to 1, we're telling, we're asking you if r is 1. So if r equals 1, in other words, if the person is a dwarf, you are too short to keep your head above water and you soon drown. Um, else, or um, less than, less than, else, greater than, greater than, else means well, if r is 1, do, do the bit that's immediately after that. Oops, sorry. Um, otherwise, do this. You are um, all right. You wade across the river. You win. So let's. What that's what that should be doing is it should be uh, saying if the player is a dwarf. Given this message, which is you are you are too short to keep your head above water, and you soon drown, you lose. But if you're not a dwarf, say you wait across the river, you win, hooray! Um, well, let's test that out. Go story. No, oh, that's not right. We have to go back. Build. That's right. Sorry. Build and play. All right. So I'm going to choose to be a dwarf. I'm going to choose to wait across the river. You're too short to keep your head above water and you soon drown. You lose. All right, let's restart. We could also restart by using the back button, but it's got a built-in restart button. Um, so let's say we want to be an elf. We wade across the river. Hey, we wade across the river, you win. All right, let's just make sure it works with all of the options. This is a big part of uh, running a game, is actually running very tedious tests where you go, okay, there's six classes and... Um, six classes and ten races, and every class should be able to be each race. Now I'm going to go through and do every single combination and make sure that it doesn't generate an error. Um, it's a sort of pain in the bum, and uh, you might choose to avoid all that by not having variables. But you know, if you do have variables, that's the thing you've got to do. So we go human, and we'll wait across the river. Hey, I waited across the river. I won. So now, so now we've made. Uh, wading across the river a lot safer. It only, if you remember, last time it only killed you. It killed everyone. Uh, now we've only we've decided that it only kills you if you're a if you're a dwarf. So let's sort of try and balance the game by doing something else on this side. Um, let's say if R is one. Oh, there is a fierce troll on the bridge. You smite it with your axe, you win. This is a little bit mythologically uh, unsound because, of course, trolls should be under the bridge, but never mind. Uh, there's a fierce troll on the bridge, and it hurls you to your death. You lose! So now... Um, what this should be doing is saying, is R1? In other words, is the player a dwarf? 
if they are, there's a fierce troll on the bridge, but luckily you're a dwarf with an axe and you, you hit it and you win. Or, if you're not a dwarf, there's a fierce troll on the bridge and it, and it kills you and you lose. So let's... Let's test that. We go to build and play. Um, I want to be a dwarf and I want to cross over the bridge. Yay! And that's, that's, that's what we wanted to happen. And then there's an elf. I want to cross over the bridge. Yep, that's exactly right. And I want to be a human. There you go. Now, so that is working as we wanted it to work. Now, you've probably noticed that there's no difference between being an elf and a human. You get exactly the same results. Uh, well, that's because this is a small little demonstration game, and of course, you know, there'd probably be more than one challenge, and so you'd probably have some something happening later where um, the correct choice for an elf and the correct choice for a human were, were different. Um, but for the purposes of this, we don't need to worry about it. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, because it can make the game replayable. In other words, let's say I... Let's say you've made a game and I uh, decide to play it and I think it's really interesting and I get through it and you've got no variables or sort of, uh, yeah, you've got no variables in it whatsoever. It's just text and then you make choices and the choices send you to somewhere else. Well, now that I've got through the game, if I make those choices again, it'll just be exactly the same. Um, and yeah, I can go another way and see if, you know, see, sort of explore a little bit and see if there's another way to win or something like that. But it sort of limits the amount of times that it can be fun to replay it. With this game, let's say I, not that this is a game you'd want to replay, but let's say it was a bit bigger and let's say I got through it as a dwarf. Well, okay, now I'm going to try and get through as an elf. And the correct path for an elf might be quite different. As you can see in this case, if you're a dwarf, you want to wade across the river, and if you're an elf, you want to... Um, no, if sorry, the other way around. If you're an elf, you want to wade across the river, and if you're a dwarf, you want to cross over the bridge. And so that is a fairly efficient way to make the game something that someone might want to play more than once. And then if I get through that, well, I can try again as a human, you know. Um, so that's a way to make the game um, interesting for longer. If it's, you know, if people want to play it at all, well, they might want to play it, you know, a, a few times and try out different, um, different options. And that's the reason for it. So that is all I want to tell you about today. Um, we've learnt about variables. We've learnt about set, which is how you give a value to a variable, um, and we've learnt how to use if, then, and else, um, which is how you have different outcomes depending on the state of those variables. There's one thing I forgot to tell you, and that is you don't have to have the else. You can have, you can have it like this. I'll just... Um, something like that, and then you'd have more text down here. What that would do is it would say, if you're a dwarf, given this text, but then give everyone this text down here. Now, in this particular case, that doesn't make a lot of sense because it's telling you that you die and then it would have more text. Well, you wouldn't do that. What you'd do is you'd have some coding in here. You'd have things in there which I'm going to teach you about. So, for example, you might say, let's say you had a hit point variable. You might say, if you're a dwarf, in here, you might have the hit points reduce and then, and then continue. Um, something like that. If you're an elf, you get this particular item because the person's more charmed by you or something like that. And so this other variable gets set to something something different and that might mean something down the track. Um, so you don't have to have the if, you can just have if, 
sorry, you don't have to have the else. You can just have the, the if, and then the dash if, which is at the bottom. You don't have to have this else, but um, often you will, and um, that's why I've decided to start with the more complicated structure, I suppose. All right, so um, we've learned about variables. We've had learned how to set them. We've learned how to how to use if then else, and we've also learned. And I didn't really talk about this much. Sorry, go to. What go to means is actually what you'd expect. It just means go to. It means let's say we choose. This is the screen that comes up if you. Sorry. This is the screen related to choosing to be an elf. Oh, I see. I've got it down there. Um, set R to two, and then go to cross or wait, which means literally just go to there. Move the story. You know, the 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 marker moves onto there. As if you had clicked a choice, but it's not a choice. It's just the the computer knowing to do that. Um, all right, so next uh, video, I will show you a slightly uh, more elegant way to do what I've done here with the different choices. And I'll also show you um, some basic stuff with pictures. So I hope that you, or graphics. So I hope that you will tune in then. And uh, if so, I'll see you then.